Hello, students. Good morning. Today we'll be uh, today we'll be starting the uh, first online class that is the group theory. So in this class, uh, I'll be teaching you some of the definitions and theorems based on that. Let us look at the first definition. Cosets. Let G be a group and H be a subgroup of G. Then G H is the left coset of H where G it is obtained by you multiplying G into H. Into means it is a star operation. Depends on what is the operation over the group G. Similarly, H into G is the right coset of H and all the elements of this is equal to is given by H into H star G. And these cosets form a partition of the group G. Now let us look at some of the properties of cosets. The first property is cardinality of any left coset is equal to any cosets in general is equal to the cardinality of the subgroup H here. Whatever properties applies for left coset, same thing applies for right cosets as well. The second property says any two left cosets are either identical or disjoint. That means they can be equal or when you take the intersection of two cosets, you will get it as empty. The third one is two cosets are equal when AH is equal to BH. This implies that B inverse star A belongs to the group subgroup H. The fourth property is if left coset is equal to the right coset, then that implies AH is equal to Another element H dash into A for some H dash belonging to H. It need not be AH is equal to HA. It will be some other element H dash belonging to H in this case. Now let us look at the next definition. That is a normal subgroup. The definition one. Let G be a group and H be a subgroup of G. H is said to be a normal subgroup of G if GH is equal to HG for all G belonging to G. That is H is said to be normal if the left coset is equal to the right coset. Next definition. A subset H of a group G is said to be normal subgroup of G if and only if H is a subgroup of G and if H belongs to H then G H G inverse must belong to H. So if H is a normal subgroup it has to satisfy these two conditions. The first condition is H should be a subgroup of G. And the second condition is G H G inverse must be an element of H. If these two holds good, then you say that H is a normal subgroup of G. Now let us prove this definition as a theorem now. So theorem, first theorem says, a subgroup H of a group G is normal if and only if G H G inverse belongs to H for all G belonging to G and for all H belonging to H. So since you have an if and only if condition, we first assume that H is, a norm, H is normal and prove that GH G inverse belongs to H. And conversely also, we assume that GH G inverse belongs to H and we prove that H is normal. So whenever you have an if and only if condition, this procedure has to be followed. So let us look at the proof now. Let We are assuming that let H be a normal subgroup of G. Then by the def first definition we have, the left coset is equal to the right coset. So we have GH is equal to HG for all G belonging to G. And if H is and H belongs to H arbitrarily, then GH is equal to H dash G for some H dash belonging to H. This is one of the properties of the cosets. Now multiplying G inverse both sides from right side, we get this as GH G inverse is equal to H dash. Which H dash, since H dash belongs to H, G H G inverse also belongs to H. So the first part is done. Now we do prove the converse part. Conversely, let H be a subgroup of G such that G H G inverse belongs to H for all G belonging to G and H belonging to H. Now we take an arbitrary element A belonging to G and H belonging to H. Since this condition holds good, we can also say that A H A inverse also belongs to H. Now we need to prove that H is a normal subgroup. So H is a normal subgroup means we need to show that the left coset is equal to the right coset. Now, so first for that, we consider first A H belongs to A into H. But 
ah can also be written as ah into a inverse a since a inverse a is an identity element you get back ah itself so we can write it like this this is equal to i'll put the brackets now and write it as ah a inverse into a belongs to h a the reason is ah a inverse belongs to h and a is an element of g so this element belongs to h a since every element of ah is an element of h a we can write this as ah is a subset of h a i consider this as a first statement again under the same uh, condition same uh, we have again let h a belongs to capital h a but h a is equal to a a inverse h a and i'll write it in the brackets and write it as a into a inverse h a and this belongs to an element a h because a inverse h a is an again element of h so every element of h a is an element of a h so from this we have h a is a subset of a h now this is considered as a second statement so from this statement and this statement we have a h subset of h a and h a is a subset of a h so from these two we can say that h a is equal to a h for all a belonging to g hence h is a normal subgroup of g always remember whenever you're showing that two sets are equal if suppose a is equal to b then we always prove that a is a subset of b and b is a subset of a and we come to the conclusion now let us look at the sec next theorem a subgroup h of a group g is normal if and only if g h g inverse is equal to h for all g belonging to g so here also we have an if and only if condition so we have to prove both the ways now for so, so for first we will assume let h be a normal subgroup of g then since we know from the previous theorem that g h g inverse belongs to h for all h belonging to h and g belonging to g we say that g h g inverse is a subset of h because this condition holds good for every h so this condition holds good so i consider this as the first statement again i consider let h be an h belongs to h arbitrarily and for all g belonging to g we have h is equal to g g inverse h into g g inverse since g g inverse is an identity element you getting back h itself so i'll write it i'll split it and write it as g into g inverse h g into g inverse since i consider h is a normal subgroup g inverse h g is an element of h so this element belongs to g capital h g inverse so we have assumed and taken an element from h and we have shown that that element is an element of g h g inverse so h is a subset of g h g inverse so from the first and the second statement we can conclude that g h g inverse is equal to h so for the first part is done conversely i assume that g h g inverse is equal to h for every g belonging to g now i need to show that h is a normal subgroup so for that i take an element h belonging to h and we know that g h g inverse is an element of g capital h g inverse and since g h g inverse is equal to h this g h g inverse is also an element of h for every h belonging to h and g belonging to g hence since this condition holds good from the theorem 1 we can say that h is a normal subgroup next we'll go for the third theorem which says that a subgroup h of a group g is normal if and only if every right coset of h in g is a left coset of h in g so here also we have an if and only if condition i'll take the first uh, statement let h be a normal subgroup of g from the previous theorem we have that g h g inverse is equal to h for every g belonging to g so i multiply g both sides from right side so g h g inverse into g is equal to h g for every g belonging to g so now using uh, changing of brackets we can write this as g h is equal to h g for all g belonging to g because g inverse g is an identity element and anything multiplied with identity element will get back the same element so since g h is equal to h g we can say that every right coset of h in g is a left coset of h in g so conversely 
I assume that every right coset of H in G be a left coset of H in G. Now for every G belonging to G, I take H G be the right coset. And for every X belonging to G, I take X H be the left coset. Since every right coset is equal to the left coset, we have H G is equal to X H. We need to show that H is a normal subgroup. When do we say it H is a normal subgroup? If the left coset is equal to the right coset, that is H G is equal to G H. That is what we need to prove here. Since G is an element of H G, why? The reason is H as an element, identity element. So you are multiplying identity element with an element G. So G will definitely belong to the set H into G. Since H G is equal to X H, G also belongs to X H. So we have G also G belongs to G H as well. G belongs to G H. Also G belongs to X H. So we say that G H is equal to X H. The reason is you take any two left cosets. The left cosets are either identical or disjoint. Since they have a common element G in both these left cosets X H and G H, these two left cosets must be identical. Since G H is equal to X H, we have H G is equal to G H for every G belonging to G. Therefore, this implies that G inverse, you are multiplying from G inverse from the left hand side. So G inverse H G is equal to G inverse into G into H. That is nothing but G inverse H G is equal to H. So from this condition, we can say that H is a normal subgroup. You can as, as well conclude here also that H is a normal subgroup. Next, we'll go for the next theorem. A subgroup H of a group G is a normal subgroup of G if and only if the product of two right cosets of H and G is also a right coset of H and G. So I'm taking the two products of two right cosets and proving that it, it is again a right coset. So for that, I consider first H A and H B B any two right cosets of H where H is a normal subgroup of G. Now consider H A into H B. When I say it's a dot, it means it's a star operation with respect to the group G. So this is equal to H into, I can remove the brackets and write it as A H into B. This is equal to H into H A into B. Since H is a normal subgroup, AH is equal to HA. So here we have AH is equal to HA. And this can be written as H into H into AB, which is equal to HAB. The reason is the H into H is nothing but H since H is a subgroup. Therefore, product of two right cosets of H and G is also a right coset of H and G. So conversely, we take the product of any two right coset of H and G via right coset of H and G itself. Now I take an element X belonging to G. Since X belongs to the group, X inverse also belongs to the group. Therefore, HX and HX inverse are two different right cosets of H and G since considering that X and X inverse are two different elements. Also by data, HX into HX inverse is a right coset of hitching that that is what we have assumed that is the product of two right cosets is again a right coset so by data we have hx into hx inverse is a right coset of h now e can be written as x into x inverse or i can write this as ex into ex inverse and this belongs to hx into hx inverse since ex is an element of hx and ex inverse is an element of hx inverse so this element belongs to hx into hx inverse. Thus, hx inverse and into hx inverse and h are two cosets of G having a common element as E. So E belongs to hx and hx inverse. Also E belongs to h. As I told earlier that any two left cosets or right cosets are either identical or disjoint. Since they have a common element as E, these two cosets must be equal. 
So therefore we have hx into hx inverse is equal to h. Consequently, now uh, this is this is what we came to know, but we need to prove that it is a normal subgroup. For that, we uh, we consider h one x into h x inverse belongs to h for every x belonging to G and h one comma h belongs to h. So here h one into x is an element of h x and h x inverse is an element of capital h x inverse. So now I multiply left side with h one inverse. After doing that, h1 inverse into h1 becomes an identity element. So we are, we are remaining with x h x inverse, and this belongs to h. The reason is h1 inverse into h is nothing but h, as h1 is an element of h, and h is a subgroup. So h1 inverse is a inverse of h1, which lies in the same subgroup h. So h1 inverse into h is nothing but h itself. So from this we have x h x inverse belongs to h for every h belonging to h. Therefore, we can conclude saying that h is a normal subgroup. So this is uh, for the first session of uh, group theory class. In the next class, I'll be looking at some of the theorems again on normal subgroups and. center of the group and a factor of a group thank you